Hi, Hi everyone. everyone! We are back again for another tutorial. Welcome back! Yes, to our humble kitchen! <laughs> so, today is really exciting because we are going to share two ways on how you can get a glossy buttercream. Yeah, so by the way, she is Valerie and I'm Christina. Oh, sorry. Welcome again to Peanut Parts Kitchen Cakes yep. YouTube channel. The nice one, the nicer one. So, right. Last night, what we did is we experimented on these two ways on how you could get a very silky, literally silky smooth buttercream. Mm, well, she is delicious. It's very nice, isn't very it? Very good, yeah. Yeah, so um, that's what we're going to share to you. And not only that, we have tested this recipe um, if it's stable enough for you know a hot weather. Yeah, yeah. So you will see, yeah, well. so you will see that clips later on um, to explain. But before that, let's just go ahead and start with our buttercream recipe. So the first one that we are going to do is the condensed milk um, buttercream, mm -hmm. which by the name itself, we're going to use condensed milk to uh, to flavor. Or to basically do the yes. So instead of using an icing sugar, which sometimes obviously you need a lot of that, and because icing sugar is obviously powder, so it, sometimes you still feel that um, it's not as smooth. Yeah, it's not as smooth. It's very stable, however, and but, delicious as well. Yeah, but um, some people prefer it smooth. So this is a good alternative. So, so what are the ingredients? So we're gonna start the first one. The first ingredient should be, of course, your uh, one full cup of butter or 227 grams. Okay. Next would be your vegetable shortening, half a cup or 113 grams. Next would be your um, condensed milk, 390 grams. Okay. Um, Is it like the typical tin? Yeah, it's actually like. The standard size, but the small one. basically it's around 390 grams. Yeah, and it's optional. You can add vanilla. Mm -hmm. So in our case, we're gonna use one teaspoon of vanilla flavoring. Well, before we start, are you sure this is 390 grams? 397 to be exact. 97. I don't think this is 397. Well, because you know what, guys? As soon as I open this <laughs> this can. Of condensed milk, you know, Christina's been getting a spoon and dipping it and then trying to eat I'm it. I'm not double dipping. No, 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 no. She's not double dipping, but then she gets a spoonful and then she eats it until and then she complains later on, oh my god, my throat hurts. You know what I did? <laughs> I left a little bit of the you know the condensed milk yep. in the can and I'm spooning it in it. Yes. So so she didn't scrape the whole thing. Okay, let's do the recipe now. <laughs> this is not 397 grams. This is probably about 380 grams but anyway um, a little okay. bit more or less of each of the ingredients is actually yeah, something to find yeah, again don't worry we're gonna put all the ingredients on the description yep okay and so you need obviously a stand mixer if you don't have a stand mixer that's absolutely fine but if you do have a stand mixer we suggest that well this is how we tried it last night and how it works fine for us all right now, first we put in your butter, which is soft consistency. So, but not melted. Yeah, soft consistency, not melted. So you want to beat it until it's light and fluffy. It has doubled the size and it's very pale. When we tried it last night, uh, it was about five minutes. Yeah, it was five, about five seven minutes. minutes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we have beaten the butter for. About five minutes, minutes. and um, just wanted to quickly show. So it has lightened its color, okay? It has lightened its color, so it's slightly pale and it doubled the size as well. And now we're going to add our vegetable shortening. Now, again, um, I know some people does not want the idea of having a vegetable shortening into your buttercream, but then guys, you can definitely omit the, the shortening, okay? But if you are a business or if you have a celebration wherein it's outside or you live in a tropical country where it's hot all the time, like Philippines, <laughs> then I think stability is very, very important. 
Chardonnay it should be fresh. You know, it's not something like uh, you're gonna buy loads of it or hoard loads of chardonnay. Yeah. And then you stuck it somewhere and now it just basically use it as fresh as possible. Yeah, because it gets rancid um, quickly. So make sure that the brand that you choose does not have a smell, does not have a taste, and it's as fresh as Christine said. All right, so I've already put the half cup of shortening in, and I'm just going to beat it again. I take about five minutes. Now, you can um, beat the butter, the butter and the vegetable shortening all together if you like, initially, if you're in a hurry. But otherwise, if you've got, if you've got the luxury of time, beat it separately. And I'm going to beat it on Kenwood. This is number three or four. Not sure which kitchen. With kitchen aid, I'm gonna say around number six to seven. Six to seven, okay, there you go. So, we'll be back in five minutes. It has been another five minutes and I just wanted to show you how it looks like. Okay, it's really, really wide. It really had double its size. And very well mixed. It's really nice. Even if I do this. <laughs> okay, so now the final step is basically adding in your condensed milk, condensed milk or your liquid ingredients. It has been five minutes and our box cream is ready. So if I just show you, okay. So look how nice, white, and looks really smooth. And I think silky. we can transfer it. We can scoop it so we can show it easily. Look at that. Let's move it here. dive into it <laughs> so good look at that oh my goodness all right so look at that you want glossy buttercream this is glossy buttercream glossy but stable buttercream yes okay i want to try <laughs> and even if we use the whole can of the condensed milk it's still not as sweet the texture is very much like your swiss meringue but it's much easier to do okay right so um this is um already done but then i mentioned earlier if for example um you don't want that milky taste into your buttercream and you still find it a little bit too sweet definitely you can lessen the condensed milk that you put in it maybe just three quarters okay but we'll show you again a different way if say for example you're not a fan of condensed milk right? and it's very good it tastes really good yes so later on when we've done that recipe um, that's when we will continue on how you color it, how we'll show you how to cut it, and we will tell you as well our experience when we put it on top. Literally, we put it on top of a radiator, a radiator <laughs> let it outside direct sunlight. So, we will show that clip to you later on. For now, we are just going to gather all the other ingredients so that we can move on with the next one. So after the first one, we're going to show you now the second option on how to achieve a glossy buttercream using just very simple basic ingredients. Yep, so it's pretty much the same as the open dance, but this is an alternative if you don't want the milky taste of the open dance milk. Yes. Right, so, so let's do the ingredients one by one. Okay. It's uh, one cup steel or 227 grams of unsalted butter. 113 grams or half a cup of your vegetable shortening and then for the milk, this is full fat milk, 150 ml, alright? Yeah. This is 300 grams of sifted 
icing sugar or confectioner sugar. Sifted. 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 Yeah, has to be sifted. <laughs> and of course, for this one, we would highly suggest to add your flavoring. Yes. If on the condensed milk, it's an optional. Um, fla op uh, flavoring is an option. Please here, we advise that you add the flavor. Yes, because if it's just the milk, it's not. I know it's milk, but it's not as milky taste as the condensed milk. So if before, well, when we tried it yesterday, we did it without, and then it just, it's just like the butter and sweet kind yes. of thing. So it's really it's lacking the vanilla. Actually. There you go. That's the word I was looking for. Plain. So for the vanilla, you can do lemon, <laughs> lemon flavor, or whatever flavor, almond, whatever really. Yes. All right. So it's pretty much the same um, principle. So. But before we do that, we are going to start with dissolving your um, icing sugar into your milk. Now, you can also, I'm sure you can also use double cream, right? You can use double cream, yeah. but it's going to feel a bit thick, probably. Mm -hmm. It's just going to take longer to dissolve the icing sugar, I would imagine. Yeah, or, or not even just double cream, maybe cream. <laughs> cream. If double cream is too thick, then cream, it, uh, whipping cream should be... I'm, I'm sure it's okay, right? It can be it's pretty much yeah. the same. All right, so let's do that. Instead of milk, um, okay, an alternative, double cream or cream or whipping cream, you can use that and dissolve your rice and sugar onto your milk. Or if you're very particular with the shelf life, instead okay. of milk, just use water. Ah, water is absolutely is so fine fine today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so because obviously if you use milk, shelf life is like before days or yes. based on the date of the milk. Yes. As opposed to using water, then obviously you can keep it longer. Isn't it? <laughs> well done, <laughs> Christina. Yeah. So, no sh um, shorter shelf life, milk, any type of milk. Longer shelf life, water. All right. So. So you're just going to dissolve, maybe little by little, so that it's surely to dissolve. Okay, if you've got those tiny whisks, that could be good. Or if you have a bigger bowl than this, <laughs> probably that's going to work better as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. So you want to make sure that it's dissolved. And as you can see, we've got a sieve there or a sifter, just because when you dissolve it, you will still have tiny lumps of icing sugar and you don't want that. So later on, when everything is dissolved, we're going to sift it. Just make sure that it's nice. Oopsie days. For our friends in Australia, this is called icing mixture, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> icing mixture. Yep, all right. So, one full cup of butter. How long do we beat it for? Um, same as what we did earlier, so about five minutes. That has been five minutes, and now I'm going to add my vegetable shortening. Ooh. <laughs> there you go. Beat it again for another five minutes. five minutes. And another five minutes had passed. So now we need to strain this to here very carefully. Compared with the condensed milk that we did earlier on, where we, we, everything yeah, well we, we just put it all together. This time we, because I, I think this is more like literally like liquid. liquid. Yeah. The other one is more thick. That's why it's okay to just kind of like mix it all together. But if you Could have... Could you try to put this all together? But it might not turn out. Don't you clean up after the mess afterwards? <laughs> no, I think, uh, well, the idea is, the reason why you stream it, slowly it's so that it incorporates as it goes yeah. because if you just put it all together like a very liquid ingredient then it might separate and that's why it's going to be very airy yeah and, and and also the liquid part and this um, combination would split so and then it will take a longer time to beat it and as you said it will become very very airy all right so before that we need to sift 
Well, this is a very good option. We would rather you guys sift this uh, mixture first before you add it onto your butter and vegetable shrimp. Yep, because sometimes you still have tiny, tiny lumps of icing sugar, so you don't want that basically. It also depends on the brand of the icing sugar that you use. Some icing sugar can be very stubborn, that even if you, you know, even if you sift it, when you mix it with any liquid, you will still get like um, tiny lumps. Tiny lumps of sugar. So like, okay. So you can show them how it looks like. <laughs> See? Yeah, there's a little bit. You put it here. So there's a little bit. Yeah, okay. There you go. And then I'll probably just add my vanilla as well in there. In the beginning, you could actually put <laughs> vanilla. And then when we finished doing this, we just realized, ah, we didn't put the vanilla. So it doesn't matter. Give it a little bit of... Right. Okay. It looks like a condensed milk. I know, well... My, me and my love story with the condensed milk <laughs> is endless. Yes, okay, so I'm gonna turn the machine on and while I slowly pour it on to my butter and vegetable shorty mixture. And it's done. Alright, so let's just Scoop it into a bowl and let's compare the two. Ooh. So both are glossy. I should actually get a spoon for myself. <laughs> okay, so there you go. So it's very glossy as well. It's thick consistency, as you can see. Has got peaks like meringue. Okay. Color-wise, they both. It's the same, actually. Yeah. It's. Oops. They are both the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Consistency. It's the same. Now it's time to dive in. <laughs> oh, let's try. This is for Dina, guys. It's very, very silky as well. So light. Oops. Yeah. This is. And you can definitely taste the vanilla on this one. Yeah. This one is the milky vanilla. This one it's more of just the vanilla. It's both vanilla is optional, vanilla is a must. So. Um, the other one, this, the, the condensed, condensed milk, milk one, which we will insert the clip. Um, that's the pink one that we piped with rose. So what we did, we left it literally at the top of the radiator for I'd say about um, before, before half an hour. I guess. Yeah, it was half an hour. It was more than half an hour. Yes. So obviously, because it was literally on top, what happened was the the bottom or the base the of base the, of the flour. flour is the one that gets melted easily, and so because that is just really too close to the mm -hmm. radiator. But otherwise, the petals, everything, they look completely I know. It was so surprising. It was so surprising, but it's really good. Mm -hmm. And earlier today, and then we left it just here. Um, I know it's still spring, but here in our kitchen, it could get hot. Um, so it stayed here overnight, still kept the, the roast. Yeah. It didn't melt. And then what did we do this morning? <laughs> and then this morning, we left it outside, yep. direct sunlight. Yes. You know, nothing happened. For about... Half an hour? No. An hour. Hour. Yeah. It's, ha it's, it's like about a little more than an hour. Yeah. And because we will start shooting, that's why I brought it in. And, but it was literally direct sunlight and it was okay. So, it was glossy buttercream hip challenge. Yeah, glossy buttercream hip challenge achieved. <laughs> it's, it definitely looked the same as how it looked last night. Yes, and um, as you can see, the how you do it is very, very straightforward. No need to melt your sugar, no need to, to have the the thermometer or use a stove for that and it's safe it's easy no egg whites as well not that the ones with the season meringue is not good but personally i'm not a very big fan with the white egg whites 
So I'm sure some of you guys would agree to me, but um, this one tastes, feels, looks absolutely the same as your Swiss meringue or Italian meringue. And the ingredients are really, really basic. Yes. Okay, so um, we are gonna take about a five minute break as we just dive into this bowls. These are actually a dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and we are gonna come back. And those are the two glossy buttercream recipes. I must say, very straightforward ones. Both are delicious actually. So one is with condensed milk, and the other one is just sugar dissolved in milk. Yes. Okay, well, we chilled this um, for a couple of minutes in the fridge. Minutes. Yeah. And this is how it looks like. If you look at them really, and if you didn't think that we tell the difference, actually. actually you don't. So um, I would say it's just down to the taste preference now. Mm -hmm. Go for the milky or go for the more vanilla one. So whichever you like. And we are gonna try it as well because you know we are still not sure if there's a difference when it comes to application of these buttercream. So yeah. we're gonna try them for you. Okay, so we're gonna start with tinting them, and then we're gonna go. Uh, with piping a rose, so a you're gonna, yeah, so you're gonna. I'll be team uh, coral, <laughs> I'll be team violet, yes. Yeah, so, well, later on, it's going to be well, it's not really a challenge. <laughs> I'm just gonna try using this recipe because you're just gonna try using that recipe, and it's just an added bonus to you. And just so we also know how it looks like after when it's chilled, because last night. Well, last night we piped straight on. Yeah, so it was, it was, it was piped straight on and it went perfectly fine. It was really nice. Obviously, it's soft, it's very easy to pipe. Um, but this time we chilled it first, so I know it looks different, has got tiny holes in it, but we'll see when we pipe. Alright, so there's only one way. Let's just go and start tinting our buttercream. Go team purple! No, go team coral! <laughs> To start tinting it, we're going to use our very own colors. I will be, this is Valerie, Coral, <gasps> Team Coral. I'll be the purple one, Violet. <laughs> so Christina's Team Violet. So actually it should be Valerie Violet and Christina oh, yeah. Coral, isn't it? Okay, so we highly suggest to use a very um, concentrated, concentrated color. color rather than liquid because you don't want to add any more liquid into it. How much did you get? Just a little bit. Okay, just a little bit. So this is exactly how we uh, tint our buttercream. So we use toothpicks and we just get a small amount. And then we smear it first. And then you scoop, fold, scoop, fold until you get a nice even color. So we don't really suggest that you do this because there's really no guarantee that all the colors will be evenly distributed. You mean don't do this? <laughs> <laughs> now we've already put them in piping bags and as you can see, nice logo. That's your secret to perfect piping. <laughs> All right, well, before we start piping, I just wanted to point out the use of your piping tips. Now, we are going to use Walton 104. Now, they're both the same, but the only thing different with this one is, this is how it looks like when you've just bought it, okay? So, it's like a teardrop shape, wide end, and then the pointy end here. Now, when we use a thick type of buttercream, which is our typical Queen of Hearts buttercream, we usually open this up a little bit. So if I compare the two, okay, so as you can see the tip, we opened it up a little bit, all right. But if you are going to use a very silky smooth kind of buttercream, like the glossy buttercream, you can actually use a very, very narrow opening because it will give you just that fine, nice, thin petals compared to a typical one. See how the difference is? Now, there's no secret. You just basically use pliers and just carefully pinch it. And that's it. Okay, so now let's start piping. No 
knowing when to, to stop. stop. <laughs> There you go. Ah. Go team purple. Go team coral. <laughs> <laughs> I had to look at my color. All right, so let me compare. So these are. This is condensed milk. This is dissolved icing sugar. They're literally the same. Same look. Same look. Same glossiness. And both yummy. So there you go. They're very, very stable. So that's it, guys. We hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. And uh, we hope you learned a lot. And um, if you've got any questions, well, any, don't forget any comments, requests. Yes. Yeah. Please don't forget to message us, comment below, and again, all the recipes, everything that you will be needing, and their measurements will be also down below. So, please like this video, yeah. share to your family, share to your friends, and do watch out for us, we might be coming to your country. We will be in the US, Canada, uh, Philippines, Singapore, India, Australia. Yes. Oh, we're going to be in Brazil. Yes, yes in October. We're so looking forward to that um, show. It's actually a show. So yeah, um, we are going to make some more videos for you. So, but if you want. We interrupt this regular programming to give you the latest updates. <laughs> We interrupt this regular programming to give you the latest update about the two glossy buttercreams. <laughs> <laughs> we thought to share you what we found out last night. So we decorated this cake and um, using the two kinds of the glossy buttercream that we showed you. Yes, and so we had them two in two separate bags, from not frozen but from the fridge, so it was chilled. And we realized that the bag with the with the dissolved sugar, I keep on forgetting dissolved sugar, the dissolved sugar in milk, um, tend to separate water. So it has got more water content in it compared to the bag with condensed milk, wherein it's how it is when you have it in a, in a bowl. So therefore, but you can definitely <laughs> use it still. Yeah. Just don't forget to kind of either you massage your bag or you beat it again. all together again. Yes, for, um, can use it. Yeah, for just a few minutes. So you beat the one with, if you see that happen, if the water separates a little bit, just beat it again for, I'd say about one or two a minutes. Minute or two, yeah. And that's it. Um, so you will see that in this cake that we did, I'll show some close up. Um, pointing where the water was dripping from the top, it's now showing me guys. So it's hard to see maybe, but last night we definitely saw that and we think that it's very important to share this to you so that when you make it at home, you will not panic where in like, oh, no my secrets. Yeah, so no secrets with us. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> and and since we've already done this cake, <laughs> uh, do wash out. We might you know do these classes in your country. Yes. So um, that's it. It's now seriously goodbye for now. Don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> and watch out for more videos to come. We will have more interesting lineup of projects to do for you. Definitely. Alright. Till the next video guys. Bye-bye. Final bye-bye. <laughs>